Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming along. It's 3.30, time for our third presentation of our Cunard Insights Enrichment Lecture Program. Uh, it's always a subject, I think, that fascinates people. And it's a repeat uh, to the Queen Mary too, because he's been here before. It's always a pleasure. He's also got several books that he's written. Uh, he'll be doing book signings uh, during the voyage. And uh, he'll be reading some excerpts from that book during this presentation. He's uh, got three advanced uh, degrees from Columbia University and uh, Berkeley. And uh, he's talking all about space. Mars, is there anyone out there? I wonder if there is. Please welcome me with a nice hand, Lawrence Cunetz, Dr. Lawrence Cunetz. Hey, Ray. Thank you. I just start back as why is this a a place of fascination. Great pictures, great photographs, the latest of what we know, the latest of what we've seen, taken by the two wonderful uh, rovers that are still on the surface, Spirit and Opportunity, on different sides of the planet, as you can see. Um, here are the images taken from orbit. And you can see older features that look like massive water that create islets and runoffs. This, uh, these kind of features on Earth only take place when you have a huge amount of water flow. Uh, here you see uh, what we would com com commonly call on Earth a delta. And you can see this river delta. Uh, you can see what looks like the, the brighter material, either salt or more recent stuff that came up from the flow of water uh, that's taken in this three-dimensional imagery that was uh, that came back a few years ago. When you see this, uh, you realize massive amounts of water had to cause this. Where is it? It's nowhere to be seen any place. Uh, here's another one. This is the rim of a crater, and you look at the rim, and you see these sharp, dark lines from the top. Um, if those lines were very, very old, they would not be so sharp, and they would not be so dark. And they're coming from the rim of this crater, which, and you can see the runoff down below them. Um, and there's another image of that coming closer. And here you see a crater filled with ice. This is not liquid water. Don't, let's not confuse liquid water and uh, ice water or frost, because uh, life is not known to be able to live on frost or ice. It's known to be able to live in liquid water. But if there is ice and there is heat, as we know, there is liquid. So the question is, where is the heat? Um, here you see some uh, amazingly dark lines coming down from the top of this crater, and you know, what could this be? And uh, it, it's either some kind of magma from an uh, uh, under, under, underground uh, geyser. Uh, we don't hear those things, we don't see them. Or it's from possibly salt water breaking through the surface because there's uh, water beneath the surface. And then we get to some surface images. Uh, here is Spirit at Gusov Crater on landing day, and we'll look at some of the pictures that it's taken along the way. It took this picture its first uh, couple of days uh, at Gusov Crater. These are two to three kilometers uh, away. All of these uh, places you see have been explored. Um, very flat, uh, very uh, not many large boulders. It looks like a place you could take a walk in somewhere in Arizona. The only way you would really be suspicious that this is not a place on Earth is to look at that sky. We don't have skies like that here. Uh, here are targets of opportunity. I mentioned earlier, each, at the end of each day, uh, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, the Spirit and Opportunity scientists get together and they say, well, let, how many kilometers are, are we going to send them out uh, tomorrow? And they plan a course and send the signal out for that next day. Here you see haze. Haze existing in the Martian atmosphere. Here's uh, the hazy sky on the right, uh, non -haze, less haze on the left. So you have a place with haze as well. You ask all these questions. Uh, this is an infrared spectrometer that's aboard the, uh, uh, the two rovers. And it, uh, it gives you a snapshot of the temperature, how hot it is. And we know things get, like I say, it's, it's amazing. It can get as hot as 80 degrees. And because the atmosphere is so thin, it can be 20 degrees below zero at your feet and 50 degrees above zero at your head because the air is so thin and heat rises. So it's a very unusual place in that regard. Here's another picture of infrared uh, spectrometer. Uh, these things, 
These things are called blueberries. And uh, blueberries uh, are surrounding this little circular cut that was made by a drill called a rock abrasion tool. It's a round drill that drills into the surface to look to scrape away all the outer stuff so you can determine the minerals. The instruments on, on board the two rovers determine the minerals. But I want you to pay a particular attention to these uh, blueberries because if you go to southern Utah, you will see blueberries all over the place. And uh, the blueberries in southern Utah look remarkably like the blueberries on Mars. And here are some more pictures of them. Uh, they are interspersed between these rocks in what looks like a flow path. Uh, of, of something that carried them. Here's a close-up of one in the flow path. Now, the interesting thing about the blueberries, they can only be formed in liquid water. They kind of precipitate out and form in these little spheres, and yet there's no liquid water anywhere. In fact, the depth and the amount of these blueberries and the location of all these features I've been showing you is vast, and it's all over the planet, and yet there is no water to be seen. And the only way there could have been that much water is if the atmosphere was a lot thicker than one one hundredth of ours. And the only way that that could have happened is if Mars was a lot warmer than it is today. And uh, we have some clues here because we have things on Earth called extremophiles. These are microorganisms that can survive under extreme conditions. Streptococcus mitis was found on a brought back from a camera screw, returned from the moon, and, and cultured back to life after five years on the lunar surface where it's totally dead. So we know that certain kinds of bacteria can survive. We have thermal vent smokers. We have bacteria that can survive in thermal vents, sulfur bacteria, uh, bacillus and furnace, which uh, extremely hot Deinococcus radiolurans, which in atomic reactor cooling tanks of all places. So we have... Uh, we have these extremophiles, cyanobacteria at Yellowstone National Park Hot Spring, that can survive in all kinds of nasty, nasty places. So it leads you to believe um, Mars isn't that bad. And in fact, I'd like to conclude this with this uh, picture that I took in my mother's condo parking lot. And uh, here you see in a, uh, you know, a, a wall next to an outlet, and there's a little plant that managed to break through because life finds a way.